Hey everyone, Zaniverse here, and welcome to the first volume of Early Access Excellence. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, episodes and volumes? What the hell's going on here? As much as I like banging out a quick little 5 minute video or rant about a small game, YouTube's algorithm isn't quite as big of a fan of anything that's less than 8 minutes long. However, I don't want to stretch a 5 minute script to a 10 minute video. So, to combat that, I'll be turning Early Access Excellence episodes into volumes, which will be comprised of 3 games apiece, meaning that you guys will receive longer videos, I'll be able to cover games before they leave Early Access, and the corporate overlords will actually send my video to more than 1% of subscribers their front page. Hopefully. Today's first game, Dread Templar. Developed by T19 and published by 1C Entertainment, who haven't been involved in anything that I've heard of. Oh hey, Alakine's gun. The first thing you hear when you boot up the game is this. Oh yeah, it's one of those games. This game sees you step into the shoes of a Dread Templar who enters hell in order to find revenge on whoever. The plot is paper thin, but it honestly doesn't matter as this is just early access, focused purely on the gameplay. And the gameplay is pretty damn good. We go through a tutorial and learn how to jump, dash and swim. We also learn how to use Bullet Time, a classic mechanic from several titles, ranging from John Woo's Stranglehold to the Max Payne trilogy. It runs out pretty fast, but recharges as you kill things. Throughout the game, you come across a whole cast of demons, such as ghouls, ghouls with shotguns, bomb boys and these... things. You are given a whole arsenal of demon killing tools, ranging from dual pistols, dual uzis which are insanely satisfying to use, a shotgun, a bow and arrow? What? There's also these infernal weapons, which are extremely powerful and saved my skin more than once. There's red barrels that naturally explode. You can have a pair of katanas which you can attach to one another in order to throw it at some unsuspecting demon. You're able to find Templar emblems and blood gems, which you can use to power up weapons at upgrade altars. Each weapon allows up to three emblems. Some of these come with stronger variants later in the game. Emblems can do things like give you higher damage, increase your ammo capacity, and give you faster firing rates. Each weapon has up to three upgrade slots, which you need to be unlocked by using these blood gems, with each additional slot requiring an additional gem. The level design harkens back to that of the old Doom games, maze like dungeons with several paths to take. No map either, because this is a real man's game. There's a bunch of secret areas in every level, so if you see some weird looking textures, just hit E on them and you'll probably be rewarded. There's also side areas which are harder than the base difficulty but they do come with extra rewards such as strong health pickups, better Templar emblems and additional blood gems. The current early access version includes 2 entire chapters with 5 levels and a boss each with the final release having 5 chapters and 25 levels in total. The game plays very well, the movement is fluent and smooth as the rapid weapon switching, reload times and heaps of enemies being thrown at you at all times make it very chaotic. Graphics are overall good and enjoyable for your eyes. Very familiar to anyone who's played anything from the 90s, which is where this game draws most of its inspiration from. The old school graphic style makes it so that basically anyone with a computer can play this game and still run it at a solid FPS count. Yeah, this early access game didn't crash once, nor did it ever drop any frames, so that's a giant plus if you see the state that some AAA games come out in. The two already released chapters took me just over 3 hours to complete, that being said, I missed out on a whole bunch of secret areas mostly because I'm an impatient fuck, so if you're down to 100% it, it could probably take you over 5 hours. I assume that the entire release, currently scheduled for fall of 2022, should run anywhere between 8-10 to 10 hours in total. The game currently costs $15, but the devs have stated it will go up when they fully release the game. So if you think that everything I've said sounds like your cup of tea, or if you liked Quaker Doom Eternal, I'd recommend picking it up and hopping in now to save yourself some money down the line. You'd also be helping the development of an insanely fun indie title that definitely delivers in the genre that it set itself in. I was pretty surprised to not have seen Dave Ashi, King of Boomer Shooters, tweet about it at least 23 times in the week of its release. So yeah, that's all I've got to say about Dread Templar. It's fun, it's fast, and it's excellent. Today's second game, Prodeus. Published by Humble Games, who you might know from Forger and the recently released Sun Puzzler Unpacking. Developed by Bonding Box Software, which is actually just two boys and two good boys, who also worked on the first two Black Ops games, Bioshock Infinite and Doom 2016. The guys that is, not, not the dogs. It entered early access on the 9th of November 2020. I bought it five days later. Together with Paint the Town Red. Now, Rodeus is one of those fancy new boomer shooters, most heavily inspired by Doom, which it basically is in everything but name. The premise of Rodeus is quite simple. You are not Doom Guy. You pick between one of seven difficulties, ranging from ultra easy to ultra hard if you're a masochist. You're sent to various locations in order to get rid of the chaos. A collection of animated demons that range from regular zombies, zombies with shotguns, 
this dog thing, imps who shoot fireballs, a variety of flying assholes, hazmat zombies who spill toxic waste upon death, even the juggernaut from MW3 survival mode makes an appearance. There's also blue versions of the enemies, who can deal and take more damage. Fear not, as you will come across a vast assortment of firearms to use to exterminate these creatures. You've got the small arms like a pistol, which doubles as a burst fire pistol, dual SMGs and a shotgun. But there's also the fun stuff like a quad barrel shotgun, grenade and rocket launcher, a plasma rifle that will lock onto an enemy, a shock rifle that turns into this overpowered railgun, capable of killing several enemies at once, and many, many more. These will be quite useful in your mission to coat every floor, wall and ceiling in various colors of demon juice, even the player model. You do all of this to one of the most banging OSTs I've ever heard, made by their own Justin Wang themed Mick Gordon, Andrew Hulschild who also worked on Dusk, a Medieval, and Doom Eternal's Ancient Gods DLC. Very impressive. He also doesn't like NFTs, so he's quite cool. The game consists of about a dozen levels, which is quite good for the twin- How much? Jesus fuck. Each level sees you go through a maze of hallways and rooms, killing demons and collecting runes and other cool shit. Once in these levels, you're completely free to do what you want. Each one of these levels is really well made and quite big, especially the later ones. There's key cards and an auto map available to find in every level. These open up new areas and reveal the entire area respectively. There's also heaps of secrets for you to find. These primarily involve finding some sort of small secret passage in order to find some additional ammo and armor. Each level rewards you with a scoreboard and not much else. A higher base difficulty gives you a higher base score multiplier. It also shows your amount of kills, deaths and secrets found. There's also some weapon specific time trials for you to compete in. These have you shoot targets in order to progress as fast as you can. However, after you've managed to complete the admittedly limited amount of official content that is currently in the game, you can always take to the workshop which already has several hundred levels available for you to play. Some good and some bad. The staff picks and contest women categories are stacked with absolute bangers though. And if you're one of those creative types, you can even create your own levels in the editor. In short, Proteus is a very promising Doom-inspired boomer shooter. Although a little overpriced, the core gameplay loop is fun as hell, accompanied by great level design and solid gunplay and its workshop, allowing for near infinite amount of possibilities. So, if you thought everything I said sounds like your cup of tea, then please pick it up to save yourself some money in the long run. You'd also be helping the development of an insanely fun indie title that definitely delivers in the genre that it set itself in. Did I just copy and paste that from the original? <laughs> what do you get when you cross Borderlands, Doom and Risk of Rain? You get a game called RoboQuest. Developed and published by Rise Up Studios, RoboQuest is a fast-paced first-person shooter roguelite that takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where humanity has been overthrown by an artificial intelligence made up of an army of killer robots, all hellbent on wiping the floor with you. You play as a robot from the old world who is rebooted by a girl named Max. Together, you travel through a wide variety of randomly generated locations in order to attempt to survive the robopocalypse. The first thing you'll immediately notice about the gameplay is the beautiful art style that accompanies it, greatly exaggerated by the harsh lines, vibrant colors and shooty boom boom text that appears above the guns. You get to choose out of one of four classes at the start of every run. These are Guardian, who can deploy a shield, Recon, who can turn invisible, Engineer, who can deploy a friendly little robot to aid you in battle, and Commando, who shoots a rocket that does 75 damage and increases by 25% every level you gain. He's also got a shotgun that does 45 damage, which also increases by 25% every level. He's also got Fury, which is a stackable effect that increases total damage output and resistance by 1% for every stack. And so after picking Commando, you get thrown into one of many randomly generated maps. These range from a canyon, a ruined city and a hypermodern utopia. All of these have one thing in common, being completely infested with a wide variety of robots. Once you're in these maps, you can explore however much you want. 
And due to the fact this is a roguelite, every run feels entirely unique, leaving you with a fair few amount of options to make them all feel completely new due to the wide variety of weapons and upgrades you can find. Every weapon falls into one of four types, these being Assault, Precision, Demolition and Technology. Assault is largely made up of weapons that don't deal much damage per shot but have a large magazine size and a high fire rate. To balance these out, there's also Shotguns, which are the other way around, insanely high damage but with a slower fire rate. Precision are weapons that are primarily focused on longer range, like burst and sniper rifles and revolver. They're also some of the only weapons you can aim on sight, on account of them having a scope. The third class is Demolition, which is all sorts of explosive weaponry, ranging from grenade launchers to sticky mine pistols to rocket launcher. The fourth and final one is Technology. By far the most diverse type of weapons in the game, like laser pistols, a cryo launcher, this plasma cannon thing, this pair of plasma gloves and loads of other fun stuff. Some special weapons also fit into two types. Every single one of the types of weapons can also be powered up by a variety of cores, which are all sorts of upgrades that do two things. First of all, they add a stat point or two to any of the four weapon types. Each point gives all weapons from that class an additional 5% damage. The second thing they do is just give a general buff like better accuracy, higher crit damage or a faster fire rate. All of these elements are quite simple, but when mixed together, they create a surprisingly diverse and in-depth gameplay loop that I haven't gotten bored of yet after 10 hours. Lastly, there's also the main upgrades. You get to choose between two or three random ones every time your little robot guy levels up. These stack infinitely. So, if you fine-tune your loadouts, cores and upgrades, you can become absolutely overpowered and can keep your run going for longer. You can also come across these blue rock areas, which upon being entered, require you to complete a short little platforming segment, rewarding you with a whole heap of XP, cores and weapons. At the end of every era, you face a boss, which is essentially just a bigger, angrier, deadlier robot. They have this Borderlands-like splash screen when you encounter them, so that's always a bonus. Each one comes with a varied moveset and clearly telegraphs their next attack, which never leaves the fight feeling unfair. After defeating the boss, you receive a level rank. Depending on the amount of stars you earn, you also get an amount of wrenches, which you can use to upgrade terminals in your home base. These terminals result in permanent upgrades that you can take advantage of in all your following runs, thus allowing you to get deeper and deeper into subsequent runs. Permanent upgrades range from finding more weapons out of looted chests, regaining more health from repair bots, and being given an additional perk choice when leveling up. Everything else is also pretty good. The cartoony art style works really well in tandem with the gameplay and music. Overall, I had a lot of fun with RoboQuest, which is surprising since I bought it all the way back in 2020 and refunded it after only two days. The game's got a solid foundation and provides some fast and fun action, satisfying gunplay and banging tunes. Hey, thanks so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you enjoyed, leave a like, a comment and subscribe, as I have 157 more videos scheduled for release between now and the inevitable heat death of the universe. As always, I wish you all the best. I've been Xenoverse, till next time.